Hello friends, you're with the Lonesome Gamer and I'm playing 2038. Now, we enter a new stock round and I think this is going to be a exciting stock round, at least for people like me who find stock rounds of 18xx games something exciting. Now what happens by the end of the last operating round was that the TSI transferred basically all the money into an independent company, Fast Buck. They purchased a ship. Situation is now that the TSI has four ships, which is obviously good. They are at their maximum. They can make good runs. But they're out of money. Is it a good or a bad company? Honestly, I find that hard to say. Um, I really do. I mean, they can make runs, even if they explore. I think they can make runs that might be worth something like 400 bucks or so per run. Um, that's a lot of money. So even if they decide to pay out only half, for example, they will still pay out 200 bucks to the shareholders and 200 bucks will stay in the treasury, which is enough for further investment. So I think in the end, although this looks super questionable, it's not such a bad company. The question is how long will these ships run, right? If you have an 1830, if you have four four trains and no money in your company, you know you're fucked. Because these four trains, first of all, you usually, even with four, if with four trains, at the very beginning of the game, you will usually not make that much money, as you can do in this game. And... In addition to that, there are not that many Phase 2 trains um, as we have here. There are 10 Phase 2 trains here and only one of them has been purchased. And in addition to that, you will probably see more companies operating um, so that the less Phase 2 trains are purchased faster than it will happen here and then when the first um, uh, 4 train comes out um, all these trains would rust and you would uh, be in quite a bit of trouble. I think that's different here. I think that these trains or the, that these ships will actually have the option to do a few more runs, at least two more because the next stock round, well, there's always two operating rounds between the stock rounds, and nobody will be able to start that many companies in this stock round so that these will be all obsolete. And uh, because they are very much at the start here, they probably get even a third run in the upcoming operating round because the other companies will... Um, obviously purchase new ships um, after these guys have operated. So I, I, I'm pretty sure we can at least count on the fact that these guys will be able to make three more runs and let's just say okay we have three runs with 400 bucks each um, we pay out every time only half, which is still a lot, right? We gain still a lot of, because it goes one space up when we pay out half. That's still pretty good. So that means we still make about 600 bucks into our treasury, which is good enough to, to, uh, yeah, to, to give it at least one phase six ship. Maybe if we, if we save a little more, yeah, we can even buy two of them. We will see. <clears throat> but let's first come to this guy here. He's the first player. He's got 315 bucks. 
So he thinks TSI is not the best investment anymore. Yeah, it's true they're going to pay out half probably, but that's not for sure. Maybe they will also swallow. Um, there's also the danger that simply other players will be also skeptical and sh sell shares. And right now the TSI is at 170 market value, which is really awesome. So I think uh, before the share value drops because other players will panic or something, this is the time to sell it and to get 170 bucks. So that's what we do. We sell the TSI and the TSI goes into the stock market. That share goes into the market and we get now 170 bucks for that share. Now, what's kind of interesting in this game, when a player sells shares, the market value drops. That's not a big surprise. But no matter how many shares they actually sell, it only drops by a single space. Okay, now this player has two options. He's sitting now on something like, I don't know, 480 bucks or so. Close to 500, but he's not quite there. Okay. So he could now start a new company. And the only available company is right now Resources Unlimited. That's a very good company. It has a very uh, central starting base here. And uh, yeah, I think they are, they are good. They have a strong uh, special ability. They can lay, I think, I think they can lay their first claim each turn for free which is totally awesome. They also have a lot of claims, so I think that's a very strong company to play with. He doesn't quite have the money to start it at a hundred bucks because he would need 500 to float the company on its own, but he clearly has the money to start it at 80, 80 bucks. So yes, he could definitely do that and uh, it might be the best option. However, he could also convert his minor company into a so-called growth company. Um, so I want to go a little bit into detail how this works now. What he would do is he would simply exchange his, um, his uh, minor company certificate for an available presidency, which would be again only this one. And then uh, the resources unlimited would not be your standard um, public corporation, but it would be a growth corporation. So that means the remaining 80% would go into the growth corporation's share box. Now the growth corporation share box is basically an initial offering like you know, or yeah, you could. It's basically the treasury of companies, like you know them from from partial cap games. So you might as well place your shares in the treasury of the company instead of the growth corporation share box, because because all the the shares you buy out of that box, um, all the money for these shares goes into the company's treasury and also the shares um, produce income if they are in uh, the treasury of the company. So the dividends for these shares are paid out into the treasury. Um, the, the shares in the stock market don't pay out in the, um, if they are in here. However, it says here corporations receive dividends for shares in this area. Well, the expansion comes uh, with a rule that say that should not be the case anymore. Um, they decided it is more interesting if it's the other way around. So now um, only um, the, the, the shares in the growth corporation box pay out dividends to the companies. However, a company has the option with its own treasury's money to buy any number of shares 
from the stock market into the growth corporation share box. These are additional rules that uh, come with the expansion where the designer said that should have been something uh, that we should have done already in the base game because it makes the game simply more, I don't know, interesting or whatever. So it is possible to, to transfer these shares in here for the current market value and in addition to that um, these shares don't pay out when there's a dividend but only these do. There's another interesting thing um, the, the shares in the growth corporation's share box if companies want to if a, if a player wants to buy shares out of that box and the par value and the stock value are not the same then the higher value applies. <clears throat> so let's go back. If I want to trans, uh, transform this into a growth corporation I'll take the presidency 80% the remaining shares go into the growth corporation share box and uh, the par value is always, as you can see here, 67. However, the share value is only 10. The starting share value is only 10. So that means if someone buys shares out of this growth corporation share box, they have to pay the 67 because it's the higher of the two values and that money will then go straight into the treasury of the company. On the other hand, um, these new purchased shares will basically immediately lose value and be only worth 10, at least until the corporation manages to gain stock value. Now, this brings us to some really difficult points, I think, and I, I find it very hard to, to really understand it and if it really makes sense to buy. Um, okay, here's the thing. So first, I think what's pretty obvious is as the owner of the company, you probably don't really want to buy a lot of, sh of your shares out of the growth corporation share box. Why? Because these shares in that box they simply produce money for the company's treasury while the company is running. Okay, So it's always good if shares are in that box. In addition to that, the sooner you buy the shares from that box, I mean it's not quite that, but they will, if you buy them before they pass the 67 uh, value, you will get them for 67. And let's say every share would be sold out, the company would basically only receive 670 bucks from that. And that's not, that's not that much money. So, um, and I guess... That is also the reason why they start so low, because this should be some kind of protection that too many people buy out um, these shares, because the shares will have a lower value. But that's exactly the question that I'm asking here myself. Is it worth buying shares of another company from the growth corporation share box because you know you're gonna hurt the company these shares will not make any more money here but the, the, the dividends go to me in the end the corporation also will not get that much money in the treasury simply for the share value because the, the, the par value is fairly low um, And uh, 
the share price will actually rise fairly quickly if the corporation pays out. I mean, it's basically just, we can say just up to three operating rounds and then the shares are already even, if it always pays out fully. So yeah, I think it's a very tough choice for a player who doesn't hold a company, who doesn't hold the presidency of a growth company, to decide if they want to invest in such a company or not. Um, it really is, and I'm not sure about it. Of course, if the non-president players invest in such a company, that means if the president wants to hold the presidency, he also has to invest in the company, right? Which will then uh, possibly clear up or clear out the growth box fairly quickly. We might then see even the share value rise and uh, that means that then the um, the, 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 the time, yeah, the, the, the break even point will actually happen sooner. Lots of things to consider here. I think it's really, um, it's really hard to make these decisions. These decisions are obviously also uh, important for the question, do I co want to convert my company in a growth company at all? Because I got to know what can I expect from a growth company? Can I expect a high? Um, can I expect a lot of money in the treasury? And that obviously depends on how the players will buy these growth shares. So it's very hard to, to make these decisions. I don't have the experience to really know that. One thing though is pretty clear. I get 50% of the income of Torch per operating round for this certificate. For this certificate though, I will only get 20% plus the share price increase. Um, so at the moment, we're talking about 100 bucks that I get for this certificate per operating round. For this one it would be 40 plus, well, at least for now, it's quite a bit. It's um, 24 per share. So these are two shares, so that's actually 50. So it's also quite a bit. It's nearly no it's 90 bucks. This, um, it will not rise that drastically. There, the, um, the way this market is organized is that at the beginning there's a pretty high, uh, pretty high steps then uh, from kind of, I don't know, 43 or so to, well, let's see, uh, kind of from 43 to 17 to 97 or so. The steps become clearly lower and then it rises again. So I think as a long-term investment, this is clearly, this is probably better than that one. But we're talking about a real long-term investment here. Of course, there's another aspect that we got to think about. The RU starts here. If it starts as a growth company, it will also get the base from the torch in addition to that and that is simply an additional base and I wonder what about the claims I think I'm not sure if it gets yeah actually it gets also these specific no that's not quite true I think it does not get additional claims although I'm not sure about that maybe it does let me see that let me check that it's written here, that's TSI, does it get additional claims? That's a good question. Or is that just, hmm, not sure about that. 
Okay, sadly there's only an extra base grow, a growth base marker there, but no growth claims. So we cannot, uh, we basically have to spend our own claims and replace um, claims of the old corporation that way. Which is not bad, I mean you get kind of a good start. Um, you start your new corporation, your new major corporation, and already have a few claims, a base, and you know, having a base here, these two claims, that's a, a powerful situation basically for the RU. But on the other hand, and that's the thing, you know, if I start, if I continue operating Torch, it will make, as I said, 200 bucks each turn, which means 100 bucks for me, 100 bucks for the company. That means again, that's a lot of money, a hundred bucks for the company. And that means that um, even if these two ships become obsolete, the company will be able to buy a new ship and continue operating and probably make about the same amount of money. There are limits it will probably not expand anymore or something, simply because it has only two claims. That's the problem of the small companies. They only have two claims, so they can only make so much money. That kind of sucks. But it still is a lot. And uh, yeah, I think it's worth it. <clears throat> so therefore, My decision is probably not to change that into a growth company. Instead, I'm going to launch simply Resources Unlimited for um, for 88. That's pretty good. And simply continue running this company for um, <clears throat> yeah, for the money expected. On a six, I will reconsider it and maybe then exchange that, um, make that a growth corporation. But I think that's a stupid idea. Well, of course we have a six. So I'm going to reconsider it, and now on a five or six, I'm going to exchange that thing. Nope, that's not the case. <clears throat> okay, good. So I will actually do what I plan to do. I'm going to leave that a minor corporation, it makes a ton of money for me, and instead I'm going to start the RU for, uh, for 88 bucks as a par price. So that also means that now these shares of the RU, the remaining 80%, go into the public corporation share box and the next three companies, uh, the presidencies of the next three companies, the Venus Prospectus LTD, this is this one here, the Luna Enterprises down there, and the Mars Mining Associates up here, <coughs> they all go now into the corporation lounge box <clears throat> and uh, yeah these are now the next one that could be launched so next is then this player here and uh, well he sits on 200 bucks if he sells that thing he gets another 150. Is that enough to start a corporation? Well, he would. You basically need 300 and. Th Wait a minute. You need half of 67, which is 335 bucks, to start a corporation. So if he sells that. He has exactly, let's see, that would be 200, 
yeah, he would have enough money to start his own corporation. Question is, does he want to do that? Um, 67 is not exactly a terribly high par price. On the other hand, he's got a private he wants to sell. And I think that the companies that you can start now are better than the companies that you can start later in the game. So it might be a good idea to say, okay, I want to start, um, I'm going to start a company now. Question is only, where do I want to do that? And, uh, and which one? Yeah, of course. And I might also consider making Drillhound a growth corporation. That's another option that I have. Is that interesting? Well, I mean, Drillhound isn't doing that. Is, let's say that will. That way, Drillhound is in an interesting area. They, uh, there are these rares here. They can deliver them here. That's a cool thing. However, they got to compete with the RU and they're going to operate before us. So um, it is not unlikely that the RU will claim, for example, these two rares first. And then, uh, of course, we would get the claim of Drillhound here. Well, that's actually an interesting... F yeah, no. Yeah, we would get the claim of Drillhound. But that means two of these interesting rares are then already gone. We might also have the option to to go for nickel, deliver that here. Um, let me check that out. So here's the thing. If I start Venus Prospectors, I get another 10 ba uh, plus 10 bucks for rare delivery and plus the, ten, uh, the plus 10 bucks here. Now, in theory, <clears throat> the Venus Prospector's base is here, okay? There's quite a bit of rares here in the area. Let's say I managed to build a second base somewhere. And I place a refuel station or so. <clears throat> and I could clap, get my hands on, on some of these rares. Each rare would give me plus 40 if I deliver it here. That's a lot of money. And therefore, <clears throat> I think that's actually what I want to do. I want to start uh, the Venus Prospectors with Drillhound. This is, I think this is a good situation to start a growth company. First of all, this company does not make a lot of money, right? They are just not in such a great position. They have only a single ship. The ship can only transport a single good. So that, that's not that great. <clears throat> um, next. <clears throat> okay, they might be able to get a second ship pretty soon. But still, I don't know. The next problem is that I don't have the money to really start a corporation high. So therefore I might I think I say okay you know what I'm gonna make that a <clears throat> and I can use this uh, the specific the specific bonus of Drillhound for my new corporation too which perfectly combines with its bonus. So yeah, I think that's what I'm going to do. And uh, I can show you now how that works. Well, basically, as I already said, we exchange the presidency for uh, the, the presidency of, of, uh, of Drillhound for the presidency of Venus Prospectors. Cool. <clears throat> 
then this money here 65 bucks go into the treasury of the company that's all there is no more money this is kind of a problem I, I understand that but that's all there is for now kind of sucks but okay the space the spaceships also go in here and um, what's kind of interesting is this company if we flip it comes with a pilot the pilot is basically the same as the special ability of the of the company but it's only a single guy so we can only assign uh, this pilot to a single spaceship and only that spaceship then gets the additional 10% rare delivery but we can assign that pilot every operating round to a new spaceship if we want so for now he just sits there and then we get the claims, the refueling stations, and the bases here. Now in addition to that, and I should have done that earlier because this is the first thing you do during your, um, your round, but I will allow this now. I'm considering selling the TSI share. Um, I'm not totally positive if I should do it. I don't really need the money. Um, and I think it's not a terrible company, so I might as well hold on to that share. Um, on a one to three, I'm going to sell it. Yeah, okay, I'm going to sell it. It still makes me good money if I do it now. It's 153 bucks. And uh, so, yeah, oops, it goes actually in the bank pool. So that's 153 bucks. I'm not totally sure what to do with that money. <laughs> so we're going to see. Maybe some other players will also start companies. Um, so, yeah, we'll see about that. Okay, so um, launching a growth company counts as a... Um, as a purchasing a share action so I'm not allowed to purchase another share with this player uh, during this turn so as you can see here this says this marker this base marker says growth so only growth companies get that and they use this to replace or to, to they place that on the old companies base so now these guys have a base there and the um, the claim is simply replaced and the drill hound claim goes away also that claim is removed of course the company is removed from the game and that's it so, then it's uh, this guy here with Fast Buck, and he is also now in a situation where he has to make really important and interesting decisions. So first, he has now the option to get rid of this company. And that's a, that's a tough call. Does he want to do it or not? Because he has also the option to purchase new shares from the company. He could, for, for example, he could purchase now a share for 100 bucks for a par price from here, which is already worth 153 bucks. That's pretty awesome. He could purchase that share and then sell it immediately into the company. And actually, that is something that the others should have done. So that was pretty stupid, actually. I should have done that. And I, I'm considering actually doing that. Well, I kind of missed it. You know, these kind of things happen in, in a real game, too. But that was obviously a stupid mistake. I could have done that. I could have purchased that share 
with all the others and then simply immediately sell it into the company and make a lot of money that way. And the f yeah, that, that would be pretty awesome. Um, in this way, he can do it. He can, he, can, he can do that, buy a share, then sell three shares in here and get a ton of money out of this. And this is really, really very, very tempting to do. The other option would be to say, TSI is a very strong company. I want to hold on to this. And I'm going to buy shares, or I'm going to buy this share, and simply try to, try to get more shares of that company. My problem was that I only held 20% of the company, then that I could not use the advantage that the TSI has, because all the other players also had a ton of shares. But now, I might get the option to get additional shares. And... I think that's very tempting and I really get a feeling like I want to do that. I would then have a very strong minor company. It feels and a, and a, and a, good, a good part of a still solid um, major company which has a massive, massive um, option to, to grow. Because they already have a few claims, they can make a lot of money very quick, they still have a lot of claims here, they have bases, refuse stations. I think it's very tempting to actually hold on to that company. The other option would be I could sell my shares, dump the company, start a new one. Well, what's out there? Let's see, we still have Luna Enterprises and Mars Mining. Luna Enterprises sitting down there, they want nickel? Hmm, hard to tell. There's a nickel here, or there's a few nickel here, it's not bad. Mars Mining is sitting up here. They want ice. Well, I can see no ice there for now, so maybe Mars Mining isn't that great. Nickel is easy to find. So, um, I don't know. It, it's a tough call. If I sell these suckers, I get 300 bucks out of it which would allow me to start a company at a hundred thousand bucks I could go for Luna Enterprises and uh, that's pretty awesome of course that's not all um, we might also consider launching a growth corporation with Fastbuck that would be a corporation that would have basically already 400 bucks and a ship um, right when they start operating and that's a phase two ship so that's not a bad ship at all holy moly there's so many decisions to make so many options here um, it's it is really hard to decide it really is Okay, now Fastback, for example, could go uh, into Mars Mining Associates. Now, if they do that, they get a plus 10 per ice delivery. Fastback is sitting here, and there's a lot of ice in the area. This one, that one, that one down here. So, it could be interesting for them. It really could. Um, They get two additional claims because of this, uh, because it's, it comes with the expansion. So, it it could be an, an an interesting choice for them, definitely. Wow, this is hard to tell. On the other hand, 
I really got a feeling I want to hold on to this company, buy the cheaper shares, and then basically I can buy a really good chip for fast buck. Problem is, I only have two. I mean, I could still transform into a growth corporation next turn, right? The problem is that what I would love to do is I would love to buy two shares of the TSI which is probably not going to be possible. I can afford one share for a hundred bucks. The other guys will probably or there's a good chance that they buy that last share and then dump it. Um, or they buy it and hold it, right? But they definitely will not let this share sit in here. So that means that um, an additional TSI share would cost me at least 122 bucks, uh, considering these might drop. Do I have that much money? No, I'm exactly one buck short. Shit. That sucks. So all I can get out of this is basically I can get 30%. That's kind of interesting. It really is. I can only get a maximum of 30% out of this. So it depends on what the other people do. But it could even be possible that I end up without the presidency, even if I want to hold on to it. Let's say other people want to dump their shares. For example, this guy then could simply buy... Does he have that much money? No, he also doesn't have the money to do it. Hmm. Wow, that's interesting, man. That really is interesting. Okay, so, again, I would love to buy at least one share here. I cannot buy both, which sucks. The other option would be to say, okay, I make fast buck a growth company and turn it in, uh, into Mars uh, Minings. And then I sell all that crap here for a lot of money. Let's see how much I would get out of this. If I buy this one for 150 and then sell all that stuff, I would get, uh, well, actually, if I buy it for 100 Let's say this goes away, and then sell all that crap. I would get 450 out of this, right? Yeah, three shares, 450. That means I'm sitting then on 550 bucks. That's a lot of money. For these 550 bucks, I could then consider starting another company at a fairly high value. The only thing I gotta take care of is that. Uh, other people don't steal fast buck from me. If I make this now a good growth company, other people might say, okay, I'm going to start buying shares from them, but um, as long as I have 210 bucks, I can defend my presidency easily. So that means I'm sitting on, what did I say, 550 minus 210, uh, is it enough to start a new company? That's now the big question. It really is. It's so hard to tell. Okay, well basically actually now I realize it was not a bad idea that these two guys didn't buy that company or that share and then uh, sold their shares simply because they would not have been able then to start the companies they wanted to start. And these are very good companies. So I think um, it's worth losing a few bucks um, to get the company you want. 
and he's in the same situation. He could now buy the share, then trash the shares and make a lot of money with it. But if he does so, he cannot launch uh, a corporation right away or transform Fastbuck into another corporation. And that also sucks.